War Diary, Eastern Front, Part 11 The days consists only of advancing and with smaller battles with the Ivans. Apparently the Russians are already defeated or are retreating faster than we are advancing. Through huge clever tactical movements our generals have already broken many enemy divisions or taken the troops as prisoner of war. These heavy blows against the Russians must slowly weaken such an army. The question is how far the Russians will retreat, because our supply lines are getting longer and longer. One of the railroad pioneers told us that the Russians have a different rail system that we have in Germany and that the rails must either be altered or the supplies must be reloaded onto captured trains. But we always get fuel, ammunition and rations. That works out well. Our driver Erwin is not back yet and we haven't heard anything either. After the morning lineup I asked the Spies to use his contacts to find out more. One day later the sergeant major reports to our commander and tells him that Erich is out of the woods and in a military hospital in Germany. So we are glad that he did not die from his injuries. The battalion commander announces an important visitor, a general wants to visit us and bestow awards on a few soldiers. So everything is brought back up to scratch and the ceremony is scheduled. It is not so easy in this sea of Russian mud, but we improvise. Those that are not at the front line up with the combat vehicles come to the roll call in front of the general. The general is brought up to speed in a brief conversations with the commanders and me. When he talks with us, he asks what we would wish for at the front. Since the question is also addressed to me, I answer honestly and say that we need larger calibers because the T-34 are much stronger and you have to land a few good hits with a 5 cm cannon to stop them. He tells us that in Germany all engineers are already working hard on new tanks and other weapons and that we won't have to wait much longer. Well, let's see how it goes. A few days later we are moving forward again. The mud is getting worse due to the bad weather and we often have to pull trucks and other vehicles out of the potholes. Roads are really bad here and cross country is usually better with the tanks. We approach a small town occupied by the Russians. Heavy artillery fire is hitting us and the grenadiers have had casualties. So we approach the place and take out their artillery forward observer. With five Panzer III and two Panzer IV we attack the place. The Stukas drop their bomb load into the center of the village and a lot of smoke and fumes can be seen. Machine gun fire bounces off our turret and I try to spot through the optics. To our left is a railroad embankment, but it can provide us with any cover during the attack. Over the radio we hear that two tanks have already suffered hits, so there are obviously anti-tank guns there. We see something shadowy through the smoke. Then something large emerge from the town, an armored train. We have heard of them before, but this is the first one we have seen. Heavily armored and equipped with heavy caliber guns, it fires from all barrels. Why hasn't the Luftwaffe destroyed it yet? We try to flank it and come with a range of its guns. Machine gun fire and anti-aircraft fire is all the raining down on us. But it's not powerful enough to hurt us. They definitely also have anti-tank guns and so we try to keep moving. I fire shot after shot into the armored train but it seems to have no effect. The armored train rolls back and tries to retreat further to get out of our effective range. It rolls back into the village and we try to follow. There are tank barricades at the edge of the town, so we are off straight through the houses. 
We hear screams as we break through the walls, but can't see anything. Russians run through the town, throwing hand grenades at us. A flamethrower squad attacks us, but our radio operator is on his toes and finishes them off with a burst of machine gun fire. In a fireball, the flamethrower explodes and the Russians run burning through the village. Again, anti-tank fire, but the gunner is probably young or inexperienced. The shot misses us and we advance towards the gun. Again a shot, and this time too low. We respond with machine gun and cannon and get to the gun before another shot can be fired. We roll over the anti-tank gun and the gunner dies under the tracks. The others had probably already run off. We get no further and the armored train rolls further out of the village. It is already getting dark and only fires light up the scenery. We need more foot soldiers here. We can't hold the place alone. Reinforcements are called by radio and the grenadiers enter the village. We take up position behind an earth wall and from there we are able to attack the exit of the village. Fleeing Russians are fired upon. Apparently they are retreating. Suddenly there is a bang next to us. Hand grenades explode and a few Russians probably want to know. Our biggest fear are Molotov cocktails that could be thrown at us. Russian close combat troops seem to be up to mischief. The commander looks out of the hatch and immediately shots ring out. He is lucky and is not hit. Again, hand grenades and we hope that the tracks aren't damaged. We hear someone climbing on the tank. Full throttle reverse, calls the commander and with a jerk we start and break through a house wall. Half inside the house we stop. Shortly after we hear machine pistol fire and loud shouting, but in German. It is quiet for a few minutes and we try to see through the vision slits. There is a knock on the slide and a voice announces that the grenadiers are there. The commander opens the hatch and it is indeed our men who have taken up positions around the tank. With combined forces we are now moving forward and fighting to clear the place. The armor train has disappeared and the air force has not spotted it. It has probably driven into a railroad tunnel somewhere. When we finally set up camp we get the casualties of the day relayed from the command post. One Panzer IV is burned out and two Panzer III have heavy and severe battle damage. There's a total of six casualties among the tank crews. House to house combat is always terrible and we are glad that we have come through again.